Yeah, you welcome to the man cave here on Literacy Matters. Sometimes we broadcast from here. All right, we're shooting. I'm going to introduce you to a man named G. Edward Griffin. Let's see what he's got to say. Hope we can get it this time. All right, here we go. We gotta get ready. Okay, Mr. Griffin, welcome to Albany, New York. Thanks for coming, and uh, go ahead. I was talking to some of you folks earlier, and it was kind of nerve-wracking to realize that uh, many of you here are experts on the topic which I'm speaking. And people were out there handing me things. Did you read this? Did you know that? And so forth. It makes me very nervous. I don't even know why you came here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's to see if I know anything about it. <laughs> so anyway, since we did get started late, I'll dispense with the usual nonsensical jokes and sort of jump into the topic and splash around until our time runs out and see how far we can get. And to give it some kind of historical perspective, I'd like to go back in time. In fact, we'll go back to the first century BC, to a tiny kingdom called Phrygia. There was a philosopher in Phrygia by the name of Epictetus. And it was Epictetus who said, appearances are of four kinds. Things either are as they appear to be, or they neither are nor appear to be, or they are but do not appear to be, or they are not and yet appear to be. I can see that. that. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I read that, I thought for sure that if Epictetus were alive today, he probably would be a Harvard professor of banking and money and would have written the definitive textbook on the Federal Reserve. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. Griffin, for that uh, introduction. We'll be back to you as soon as we can. Hope they can see this here. That's Michael New. Anyway. And all Epictetus did is, amen. All that Epictetus was saying was that appearances can be 